Sigala Varda Sutta The Advice to Sigala Translated by Rupert Gethin This is what I have heard. Once the Blessed One was staying in the squirrel's feeding ground, in the bamboo grove at Rajakaha. On that occasion, Sigala, a householder's son, had got up early and left Rajakaha, and was honouring each of the directions, bowing with cupped hands to the east, the south, the west, the north, the direction below, and the direction above his clothes and hair all wet. Now the Blessed One, having dressed at dawn, took his robe and bowl and went into Rajagaha for arms. And he saw Sigala, honouring each of the directions, bowing with cupped hands to the east, the south, the west, the north, the direction below, and the direction above, his clothes and hair all wet. Seeing him, the Blessed One said, Young householder, why are you honouring each of the directions, bowing with cupped hands to the east, the south, the west, the north, the direction below, and the direction above, your clothes and hair all wet? Sir, when my father was dying he said to me, Son, you should honour the directions. So out of consideration for my father's words, which I revere, value and respect, I have got up early and left Rajagaha, and am honouring each of the directions, bowing with cupped hands to the east, the south, the west, the north, the direction below, and the direction above, my clothes and hair all wet. But, young householder, this is not the way to honour the six directions in the discipline of a noble one. So how then, sir, should one honour the six directions in the discipline of a noble one? Could the Blessed One please teach me the right way to honour the six directions in the discipline of a noble one? Then listen, young householder, and pay careful attention to what I shall say. Yes, sir, replied Sigala, the householder's son and the Blessed One began to speak. Young householder, when the disciple of the Noble Ones has given up four defilements of action, does no bad deed from four causes, does not pursue six ways of losing his belongings, when he avoids these fourteen bad ways, it is then that he covers the six directions. He is set to be victorious in both worlds, he gains the success of both this world and the next world, and at the breaking up of the body after death he is born in a happy realm, a heaven world. What are the four defilements of actions that he gives up? Killing living creatures is a defilement of action. Taking what is not given is a defilement of action. Sexual misconduct is a defilement of action. Telling lies is a defilement of action. He gives up these four defilements of action. This is what the Blessed One said. And when the Happy One had said this, the teacher spoke again. Killing living beings, taking what is not given, and telling lies, going with another's wife, these things wise men do not commend. What are the four causes from which he does no bad deed? People do bad deeds motivated by desire. They do bad deeds motivated by hatred. They do bad deeds motivated by delusion. And they do bad deeds motivated by fear. In that the noble disciple does no bad deed motivated by desire, does no bad deed motivated by hatred, does no bad deed motivated by delusion, 
and does no bad deed motivated by fear, he does no bad deed from these four causes. This is what the Blessed One said, and when the Happy One had said this, the teacher spoke again. When desire, hatred, fear, and delusion lead someone to offend against truth, then his reputation vanishes like the moon waning in the black night. When desire, hatred, fear, and delusion do not lead someone to offend against truth, then his reputation grows like the moon waxing bright. What are the six ways of losing one's belongings that he does not pursue? Young householder. Being devoted to the recklessness of strong drink and spirits is a way of losing one's belongings. Wandering in the streets at unseemly hours is a way of losing one's belongings. Frequenting fairs is a way of losing one's belongings. Being devoted to the recklessness of gambling is a way of losing one's belongings. Being devoted to bad friends is a way of losing one's belongings. Being habitually idle is a way of losing one's belongings. Young Householder there are these six dangers in being devoted to the recklessness of strong drink and spirits, the diminishing of any wealth, increased quarrelling, a whole range of illnesses, ill repute, exposing oneself, and weakening of the intellect as the sixth. Young Householder, there are these six dangers in wandering in the streets at unseemly hours. One is defenceless and without protection. One's wife and children are defenceless and without protection. One's property is defenceless and without protection. One is suspected of being up to no good. False accusations are made against one. One encounters all sorts of misfortunes. Young householder, there are these six dangers in frequenting fairs. One is always asking, Where is their dancing? Where is their singing? Where are they playing music? Where are they giving recitations? Where are the cymbals? Where are the drums? Young Householder There are these six dangers in being devoted to the recklessness of gambling. If one wins, one engenders hatred. If one loses, one bemoans the things lost. One's wealth diminishes. One's word has no authority in an assembly. One is despised by one's friends and companions. One is not considered a desirable marriage partner, since the gambling man does not have the means to support a wife. Young Householder There are these six dangers in being devoted to bad friends. One has friends and associates who are gamblers, drinkers, drunks, cheats, liars and ruffians. Young Householder There are these six dangers in being habitually idle. One thinks, it's too cold and does no work. One thinks, it's too hot and does no work. One thinks, it's too early and does no work. One thinks, it's too late and does no work. One thinks, I'm too hungry, and does no work. One thinks, I'm too full, and does no work. And with all one's tasks still undone, one does not get what one does not have, and what one has dwindles away. This is what the Blessed One said. And when the Happy One had said this, the teacher spoke again. There is the drinking companion, the one who is always saying, My good friend! But the one who is a companion when there are things to do, he is the comrade, sleeping when the sun is high, chasing others' wives, being full of enmity and causing hurt, bad friends and much meanness. These are six things that ruin a man. With bad friends and bad companions, Occupied in harmful deeds, a man loses both this world and the next. Dice and women, drink, 
and song and dance, sleeping by day and roaming by night, bad friends and much meanness. These are six things that ruin a man. They play the dice, drink strong drink, go with women who are other men's wives, pursuing ruin rather than prosperity, waning like the moon in the black night. Penniless and destitute with his drink, the drinker given to drink sinks into the depths of debt and will soon find himself with no family. One giving to sleeping by day and finding his occupation by night, who is always crazed with drink, is not able to keep a home. It's too cold, too hot, too early, they say, and in this way their work piles up and opportunities pass them by. But thinking of the cold and the heat as no more than straw, one gets on with one's tasks and does not let happiness slip away. Young householder, these four should be seen as false friends in the guise of friends. One who is all take should be seen as a false friend in the guise of a friend. One who is all talk should be seen as a false friend in the guise of a friend. One who always says what is pleasing should be seen as a false friend in the guise of a friend. One who is a companion in squandering should be seen as a false friend in the guise of a friend. There are four reasons why one who is all take should be seen as a false friend in the guise of a friend. He is all take. He expects a lot in exchange for little. He only acts when there is some threat to himself. He looks after his own interests. There are four reasons why one who is all talk should be seen as a false friend in the guise of a friend. He professes his past goodwill. He professes his future goodwill. He makes meaningless professions of goodwill. When there are things that actually need to be done, he mentions some problem. There are four reasons why one who always says what is pleasing should be seen as a false friend in the guise of a friend. He approves of one's bad actions, and he approves of one's good actions. He praises one to one's face. He disparages one to others. There are four reasons why one who is a companion in squandering should be seen as a false friend in the guise of a friend. He is a companion in one's devotion to the recklessness of strong drink and spirits. He is a companion in one's devotion to wandering in the streets at unseemly hours. He is a companion in one's frequenting of fairs. He is a companion in one's devotion to the recklessness of gambling. This is what the Blessed One said. And when the Happy One had said this, the teacher spoke again. The friend who is all take, the friend who is all talk, the friend who says what is pleasing, the fellow in ways of squandering, these four are false friends. Recognising this, a wise man keeps well away as from a dangerous path. Young householder, these four should be seen as true friends. The helper should be seen as a true friend. One who is the same in happiness and adversity should be seen as a true friend. One who gives good advice should be seen as a true friend. One who is sympathetic should be seen as a true friend. There are four reasons why the helper should be seen as a true friend. He looks after one when one is reckless. He looks after one's belongings when one is reckless. He is a comfort when one is afraid. He offers twice as much as one needs when there are things to be done. There are four reasons why one who is the same in happiness and adversity should be seen as a true friend. He tells one his own secrets. He does not reveal one's secrets to others. He does not abandon you in times of trouble. He even gives up his life for one's sake. 
There are four reasons why one who gives good advice should be seen as a true friend. He keeps one from doing wrong. He encourages one in what is good. He tells one of things one has not heard. He explains the way to heaven. There are four reasons why one who is sympathetic should be seen as a true friend. He does not rejoice in one's misfortune. He rejoices in one's fortune. He stops those who speak badly of one. He commends those who speak well of one. This is what the Blessed One said. And when the Happy One had said this, the teacher spoke again. The friend who is a helper and the friend in happiness and adversity, the friend who gives good advice, and the sympathetic friend, these four are friends. Recognising this, a wise man should honour them respectfully, like a mother her true son. The wise man accomplished in conduct shines like a burning beacon. While he collects goods, like the never still be, goods accumulate piling up like an anthill. Collecting his goods like this, the householder brings success to his family. He should divide his goods in four and keep his friends together. One portion of his goods he should enjoy. Two portions he should make use of. The fourth portion he should put aside in case of troubles. And how, young householder, does the noble disciple cover the six directions. These six directions should be seen as follows. The east should be seen as one's mother and father, the south as one's teachers, the west as one's wife and children, the north as one's friends and companions, the direction below as servants and workers, the direction above as ascetics and Brahmins. A son should look after the eastern direction as his mother and father in five respects. As I have been supported by them, I shall give my support. I shall look after their affairs. I shall maintain the family's traditions. I shall prove worthy of my inheritance, and I shall make offering for them when they are dead and departed. When a son cares for his mother and father as the eastern direction in these five respects, then they show him sympathy in five respects. They keep him from what is bad. They encourage him in what is good. They see that he is trained in a craft. They find him a suitable wife. They hand over his inheritance at the proper time. When a son cares for his mother and father as the eastern direction in these five respects, then they show him sympathy in these five respects. And in this way, the east is covered by him and kept safe from danger. A pupil should look after the southern direction as his teachers in five respects. By getting up, by waiting on them, by obedience, by service, by being properly appreciative of what he is taught. When a pupil looks after the southern direction as his teachers in these five respects, then they show him sympathy in five respects. They teach him proper behaviour. They make sure he understands what he has learnt. They fully explain all the branches of knowledge. They introduce him to friends and companions. They provide security in all quarters. When a pupil looks after the southern direction as his teachers in these five respects, then they show him sympathy in these five respects, and in this way the south is covered by him and kept safe from danger. A husband should look after the western direction as his wife in five respects, by being respectful by not being disrespectful, by not being unfaithful, by relinquishing authority, by providing her with adornment. When a husband looks after the western direction as his wife in these five respects, 
then she shows him sympathy in five respects. She attends to her work properly. She treats the servants well. She is not unfaithful. She looks after the family's wealth. She is skilled and tireless in her duties. When a husband looks after the western direction as his wife in these five respects, then she shows him sympathy in these five respects, and in this way the west is covered by him and kept safe from danger. A son of a good family should look after the northern direction as his friends and companions in five respects, by being generous, by talking kindly, by acting helpfully, by treating them equally, by not breaking his promise. When a son of a good family looks after the northern direction as his friends and companions in these five respects, then they show him sympathy in five respects. They look after him when he is reckless. They look after his belongings when he is reckless. They are a comfort when he is afraid. They do not abandon him in times of trouble. They honour his descendants. When a son of a good family looks after the northern direction as his friends and companions in these five respects, then they show him sympathy in these five respects. And in this way, the north is covered by him and kept safe from danger. A master should look after the direction below as his servants and workers in five respects by assigning work in accordance with their capabilities, by providing them with food and wages, by looking after them in sickness, by sharing rare delicacies, by giving them leave at the proper time. When a master looks after the direction below as his servants and workers in these five respects, then they show him sympathy in five respects. They get up before him, they go to bed after him. They take only what is given. They do their work well. They spread his good reputation and name. When a master looks after the direction below as his servants and workers in these five respects, then they show him sympathy in these five respects. And in this way, the direction below is covered by him and kept safe from danger. A son of a good family should look after the direction above as ascetics and Brahmins in five respects, with friendliness in acts of body, with friendliness in acts of speech, with friendliness in acts of thought, by keeping his doors open to them, by providing them with their material needs. When a son of a good family looks after the direction above as ascetics and Brahmins in these five respects, then they show him sympathy in six respects. They keep him from what is bad. They encourage him in what is good. They show their sympathy with kind thoughts. They tell him what he hasn't heard before. They clarify what he has heard before. They explain the path to heaven. When a son of a good family looks after the direction above as ascetics and Brahmins in these five respects, then they show him sympathy in these six respects. And in this way the direction above is covered by him and kept safe from danger. This is what the Blessed One said. And when the Happy One had said this, the teacher spoke again. Mother and father are the first direction, teachers the south, wife and children are the west, friends and companions the north, servants and workers are below, above are ascetics and Brahmins. The able householder of the family should honour these directions. The wise man, accomplished in conduct, gentle and bright, unpretentious in character, Without arrogance, such a one wins fame. Rising early, tireless, he does not waver in adversity. Faultless in his behaviour and clever, such a one wins fame. He brings people together and makes friends. 
He is welcoming and beyond stinginess, a leader, a teacher and guide. Such a one wins fame. Generosity and kind words, helpful actions in this world, and treating others equally in all matters and in all circumstances. Such kindnesses in the world hold the axle of its chariot as it moves. Should they not exist, then neither mothers nor fathers win the respect and worship owed them by their sons. It is because these kindnesses are what the wise hold in high regard that they achieve their greatness and deserve their praises. When the Blessed One had spoken these words, the householder, Sigala, said, Excellent, sir, excellent, as if someone were to set upright what had been knocked down or reveal what had been hidden or point out the way to someone who was lost or hold a lamp up in the dark so that those with eyes could see just so the Blessed One has made the truth clear in various ways. Sir, I go to the Blessed One for refuge and to the teaching and the community of monks. Let the Blessed One accept me as a lay follower who has taken refuge from this day for as long as I live.